Hi, welcome to this video presentation on the end of the financial road, the coming global financial meltdown. So the first question is, one, why would I record something so uh, of such doom and gloom? And the second thing is, why would you actually watch it? Well, the answer to that is, uh, is this. A couple of months ago, I actually recorded a video called the Euro Banking Crisis Update, the Italian banks, Deutsche Bank and Bernanke secret visit to Japan. And this received over 7,000 views, which uh, I was quite staggered by, and also lots of positive comments and requests for further videos. So this got me thinking, well, why not put together a sort of uh, an abridged history of why we're heading, where we're heading financially, and how we got into this mess in the first place. So just before we get into that, let's just uh, have a quick overview of what the problem is. The problem is global debt. And I'll show you the history of why we're in this mess. But if you just look at the Economist's uh, debt clock on their website, you can see this is moving around at around $300,000 uh, every 10 seconds or less. And this is the interest on the global dot and how it's accruing over time. It's an inescapable fact that we have a major global financial debt problem, which is coming to an end. And you'll see why when I present all of the facts in the presentation going forward. So this is the backbone of the problem that we have. And of course, more and more of this is making it to the mainstream news. In 2011, I wrote a book called The Tipping Point, way before any of this was being reported about the problems that were going to be coming down the line. Obviously, five years ahead of schedule. Doesn't mean to say it's wrong, it just means it was too early. So again, as I present the facts now and the background story all the way up to the present day of recording this video, you'll see why we have a major problem thanks to the central banks and all of the politicians since 1971. So the story starts way back in uh, Bretton Woods between the 1st and the 22nd of July 1944. And in the penultimate year of World War II, the, uh, there were 730 delegates from all 44 allied nations, and they gathered at the Mount Washington Hotel in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. And here they agreed to establish a new financial system, and the United States, which controlled two-thirds of the world's gold, insisted that the Bretton Woods system would rest on both the gold and the US dollar. So basically what we had here was a gold standard and that's what was actually set. So after agreeing that the US dollar would become the reserve currency and it would be backed by gold, this was to remain in place for the next 27 years. On the 15th of August 1971, Nixon took the decision to actually remove the gold standard. At the time they were fighting the Vietnam War and money was tight. Now the problem with having a gold standard of course is you can't print uh, more dollars than the value of the gold that you have in storage. So if you remove the gold standard, you can print as much as you want. And this is the catalyst for what started with the run up to the debt situation, the global debt that we have now and we saw earlier on. But once you remove the gold standard, you end up with what's known as a fiat currency. And as it says here, a fiat uh, money is currency that a government has declared to be legal tender but is not backed by a physical commodity, i.e. gold. So the value of the fiat money is derived from the relationship between the supply and demand rather than the value of the material that the money is made of, or backed by as well. So this is affectionately known within uh, the sort of, uh, shall we say, uh, non-mainstream media as toilet paper. Fiat currency isn't worth the paper that it's actually printed on, and you'll see why going forward. So as monetary scholar Edwin uh, Vieira pointed out that every 30 to 40 years the reigning monetary system fails and has to be retooled. And the last time around for the US was in 1971, which we've just seen, when Nixon cancelled the convertibility of dollars into gold. Remarkably, the world bought into the underbacked dollar as its reserve currency, but only because that was the path of least resistance at the time. But here we are, 45 years later, and it is clear to anyone paying attention that the monetary system is irretrievably broken and will fail. And I would have to second that again. You'll see as we go further into the presentation why this is the case. 
So what we're going to do now is fast forward another 37 years. I mean, like I said earlier, we can go through every single topic in great detail and present an hour or two hour video on each of these topics. But what I want to do here is just to give you a summary and a sort of a, an, an unabridged version of why we're in the mess we're actually in. A condensed version, as it were. So now we get to the crisis of 2008 and we see that... Uh, the markets fall apart. We've got one debt bubble that was run up from 2003 when the illegal Iraq war was engaged uh, by the West. And uh, as Bush said, go out and spend, make America great. And that's what it, precisely what people did. We had housing bubbles, uh, stock market bubbles, you name it, we had it all. We had the toxic mortgages, we had the whole lot. So we had this financial crisis in 2008 that uh, brought the world to its knees. And again, it was debt-based. There was that much debt around at the time. Uh, bank debt, they've been gambling. You know the, you know the story, we all know the story. So the stock market uh, dropped in 2008, you can see there. And you can see there, UK banks received bailouts, uh, big bank bailout. And there's this wonderful list on CNN that shows you every bank and how much they were bailed, ha uh, actually received in the bailout. You know, JP Morgan receiving uh, 25 billion. It, it's just an eye opener. It really is. So I'd suggest you have a look at that as well. And there you can see the crisis on Wall Street. It's now become known as the Great uh, Financial Crisis as well. And of course, uh, as we all know, what's better than too big to fail? That's what the banks were told. And that's why the taxpayers bailed out the banks. It was uh, too big to jail as well. There have been one or two that have gone to prison. But on the whole, the bankers that caused the financial crisis of 2008 have got away with it scot-free and have continued to do exactly what they did prior to the 2008 crash as well, which again, we'll see going forward. So what's happened in the last eight years between 2008 and 2016? As I just said, the creation of the global debt trap, it has just become more and more of a problem and it is growing by the day again, as you saw in the start of the video with 300,000 every so many seconds being added to the global debt pile. Interest rates have been cut to zero, with not only zero but also negative. There's been an explosion in public debt in the last eight years and the creation of asset bubbles as well. The central bankers, that's uh, the ECB, Fed and uh, also uh, the Bank of England, are basically destroying the financial world. And again, I'll present the evidence for this going forward. So interest rates cut to zero and beyond to save the global economy. This was the first thing they did back in 2008. They said they wanted to give the economy a soft landing into recession. So that's exactly what happened. And as this chart clearly shows, you can see the drop in interest rates and how this has continued all the way through and now into negative territory as well. So now we have negative interest rates as well, trying to get out of a problem of growing debt, which is absolutely impossible to do. So you can see here we've got uh, central banks cut rates uh, since uh, Lehman by 666. It's actually more than this now. Uh, I know that seems rather a prophetic figure there, the old 666. Um, Australia central bank cut rate to boost uh, inflation and growth and ECB cuts. I mean, these just go on and on. But the problem is, by doing this, they've continued to print and print and print. So now we're in a situation where we are drowning in debt. We are printing money today and borrowing from future generations to pay back. And this came in the form of quantitative easing or quantitative easing, I should say, uh, known as QE and the introduction of new money into the money supply by a central bank. So the central banks have been printing money like it's gone out of fashion and feeding this into the banking system in the hope that it would be lent out to the masses. And of course, that's not uh, been the case at all. But before we get into where it's actually gone, let's have a look at some of the debt figures. The US are now sitting on 19 trillion. 10 trillion of that has come since Obama came into power in uh, 2008. And as you can see there, it's 107% of the GDP. Now, GDP is basically the gross turnover of a nation's economy. And unfortunately for the US, uh, they have a debt ratio now that is 107% of their GDP. So the debt is greater than the annual turnover. You can see this uh, in this graph uh, created here. 
The United States GDP, you can see how this has exploded. This is the debt to GDP. You can see how the debt has exploded since 2008, uh, taking this to 107% of the GDP. And there is a, a closer look from uh, 2008. You can see this uh, just uh, continuing to grow. In the UK, we're sitting at 1.7 trillion of debt. Uh, we've got an 85% of debt to GDP. Not a good uh, situation to be in either. And again, this is reflected in this uh, graph as well. And also you can see how it's exploded. This is uh, partly, of course, uh, or due in part to bailing out the banks back in 2008. And again, you can see the closer look there. So the money is being printed by the central banks, but there is no effect from the printing of this money, just burdening taxpayers and future generations with uh, this debt. In the EU, we've got uh, 9.8 trillion and uh, we've got 92% of the European turnover as a debt to GDP ratio. So not a good picture there either. So uh, again, as you can see, the West is really struggling because of the massive debt that has been printed in the last eight years. It is creating a potentially catastrophic uh, situation, which the central banks now are actually running out of tools to actually control or actually cure. I mean, there is no cure as again, as you'll see. So if we look at this, uh, again, what I've tried to do in this presentation is get you all of the mainstream headlines that you're probably not seeing on the news unless you actually go looking for it. But it is being reported that there is a problem, but it's not making it onto the ITV News, News at 10 or BBC News, certainly in the mainstream press and some of the business channels. But just look at this, the global debt up by 57 trillion globally since the crisis from C. Uh, CNBC there and The Guardian also reporting the same thing there and also Forbes magazine as well. So again, we've got this major problem with the debt having increased, not decreased since 2008, up by 57 trillion. That's with a T, not billion, with a T, a trillion. So more headlines reporting 12.3 trillion of QE. That's how much is being printed has added up to this, which means basically what well, the rest of the article says a big fat zero because there has been no recovery following the printing of all of this money. As it says here, quantitative easing by the Bank of England, printing more money won't work this time. It will not work. You cannot pay off debt or get out of debt by printing more debt. It's just impossible. Also China, everybody sees China as the uh, new coming or the, the new to be power house of the global economy uh, and it's not the case either unfortunately they adopted the same uh, style and uh, economics as uh, the west and now also uh, record high as uh, the economy slows down over in china as well so what did the printing of all of these trillions of debt actually create well they actually created uh, asset bubbles what are asset bubbles? Well, basically different uh, assets that are just uh, run up with uh, money and uh, create uh, a distorted valuation of the actual underlying asset. First of all, we got the housing bubble. Now this has been created, of course, because uh, the low interest rates, this has allowed uh, to see the valuations of properties increase significantly. One of the byproducts of having low interest rates and also negative interest rates as well. But of course, uh, what comes with this is that the average UK house price, it's a quarter of a million, the uh, uh, statistical office says, and house prices at record highs, but experts warn uh, that could all be about to change. And of course, as uh, we saw in uh, Vancouver over the last few weeks as well, that uh, the housing bubble has burst over there from uh, the foreign investors, uh, mainly Chinese, leaving Vancouver and prices have dropped over 60%. So you can run these asset bubbles up with cheap money. The problem is when the money runs out or nobody's interested or it's overvalued too much, then unfortunately the bubbles actually burst. We then have the bond bubble and that's how the debt is created. Debt is not uh, or new money printed. They all show you this on the TV of uh, the printing presses of new cash coming out. It doesn't work like that. It's printed off computers, bonds are created, and of course what happens is you end up with another bubble as you create the debt. So we've got a bond bubble as well. 
in the bond market and of course again this is making the headlines now bonds are clearly in a bubble but when will it burst bond market is in an epic bubble of colossal proportions says uh, Bukvar so again it's being reported of what's uh, going on behind the scenes but I can assure you're not being told this by the mainstream and of course one of the uh, barometers of how well the, eco the economy is doing is if the stock market's high then everybody feels fine you know great my pension's fine uh, everything's fine the stock market's up so everything must be great not necessarily so because if you look at this chart the blue line is the money supply figures the red line is the stock market and you will see from 2008 precisely where a lot of the QE money went. It didn't go into the hands of the consumer or the masses, but stayed in the markets. And you can see how the bankers got rich with massive bonuses off pushing the markets, the stock market, to record highs. And there you'll go. You'll see the FTSE breaks historic 7,000 barrier for the first time. Dow Jones hits all-time high, but remains cheaply valued, according to uh, uh, Value Walk's article there. And then, of course, uh, when the money's cheap, interest rates uh, move lower. Of course, that frees up cash from paying higher monthly premiums on mortgages and allows consumers to go out and buy whatever they want or borrow more. That's how the credit bubbles work. And again, now you can see we're reaching the point again where the bubbles are so large. Household debt at highest for five years. Rising consumer borrowing fastest since pre-crisis. Household debt binge has no end in sight. And again, it just goes on. So you can see these bubbles that have been generated as a result of printing all of these trillions and trillions in debt and eventually feeding their way through not only the stock market, the housing market, the bond market in particular, but also down into the consumer as well. So people stretch to the limits, borrowing cheap money in order to keep the illusion that the debt based economy is still functioning. But as it says here, all bubbles eventually burst. And we've seen this through history from the 87 crash all the way through the dot-com bubble, the housing bubble crashes, the 2008 crash. They always end in tears. They have to. Everything eventually has to come back to its fair value. You can inflate bubbles, but eventually they will have to burst. What makes it even worse, of course, is the corruption in the banking system. And I say this, uh, I would like to say this as well, not all bankers are corrupt. It's the same in any industry. I'm not defending the bankers. There is corruption in the banks, as we're going to see now as well. But not all individuals are corrupt. They'll just, it's the usual case of a few bad apples. But for those who think that the markets aren't manipulated and can be driven higher or corrupted, then just take a look at some of these headlines we've got Barclays fined 26 million. Barclays again fined uh, once more. Deutsche Bank being investigated. Six banks pay 5.8 billion, 6 billion. Barclays, it just goes on. I mean, there's pages of these. And at the time of recording, this is the current one, supervisor of massive fraud at Wells Fargo lose with 125 million bonus. I mean, you couldn't make this stuff up. You really couldn't. So a handshake of uh, 125 million for creating uh, and, and rigging uh, 5,300 uh, employees, uh, creating all sorts of shady accounts and ripping the customers off. And yet uh, the person behind it actually leaves with uh, 125 million bonus. Of course, now they're being sued by customers over the fraudulent accounts and they're expected to pay 190 million. But this is nothing on the, the basis of the money they've actually made from it. And of course, uh, you know, as you present these facts, and it's not just me doing this, there's a lot of people who are aware of what's going on and putting this out. And of course, it's made its way back to uh, the top of uh, government, uh, right to the top in the US. And uh, as Obama said in his State of the Union address uh, this year, anyone claiming that America's economy is in decline is peddling fiction. So. As you watch this video, you're uh, participating in the peddling of fiction. And yet um, you can see from the information that's already been presented that there is a major problem in the financial system. And just to add to this, that Obama is uh, talking out of his backside as usual. You can see here that uh, it's not just me saying that there's been no economic recovery. You only have to look at the forward GDP figures. Yellen this week also uh, said that she was going to um, 
downgrade the GDP figures for 2017 as well. And again, the mainstream reporting that there hasn't been no economic recovery. There hasn't been an economic recovery. And I'll tell you why there's been no economic recovery, because we're still on emergency interest rates and going lower. That is not an economy that is recovered. An economy that would had uh, recovered, you would be seeing interest rates moving higher. Now, the US tried this last December, and of course, with catastrophic results in the stock market losing over 2,000 points when they did so. And this is the problem that the central bankers have done. They've painted themselves into a corner where they cannot increase interest rates without causing a total financial collapse because it will burst the bubbles that we've just seen where the rates are so low, borrowing is cheap, etc., etc. As soon as you increase interest rates, guess what happens? The repayments on the debt not only on a global basis increase, but also on a personal basis as well. And just to add uh, insult to injury, this is the money velocity chart. And what this means is the velocity of circulation of money refers to how fast money passes from one holder to the next. And here you can see this has been in decline. So the money isn't being passed around as much as you think it is being passed around with the creation of the new debt, of course. This is making things far more difficult. And also, as you can see from here, one trillion euros spent, and this is what Draghi has to show for it. This is in the European Union. You can also see the US uh, debt there as well. And you can see that EU inflation expectations are dropping. And also, as I said earlier, GDP figures are also dropping. So it doesn't matter how much they print, how negative they go on rates, the GDP figures are not increasing. And that's very simple, you see, because with a debt-based economy that's not backed by a gold standard, you have to keep spending. People have to keep spending to keep each other's job alive, to keep the economy going, to keep the GDP figures, to keep the tax revenues coming in. But you can only borrow so much. You can only then spend so much if you're up to the eyeballs in debt. And eventually the whole thing dries up. And that's why the forward GDP figures are being recalculated and downgraded. So unfortunately for the central bankers, there is uh, now a loss of credibility. And again, this is backed up by the mainstream. Beware of the great 2016 financial crisis, warns leading city pessimists. Central banks and markets uh, mind the confidence gap, continue to lose credibility, 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 credibility. And no surprise, really, because they haven't got a clue what to do now. They've tried everything. The only other thing that they could possibly try now is to actually uh, what's called helicopter money. And that's to make sure everybody gets a set income every month to go and spend in the economy to keep the illusion alive. But uh, I can't see that one coming off uh, too soon. But uh, you never know. You absolutely never know, because as far as I'm concerned, the lunatics really have taken over the asylum. So the financial collapse is coming. Uh, there's no way out of this uh, that I can see. We've got uh, huge amounts of debt. As I've said before, you can go and see that for yourself. It's all presented here. This uh, exponential growth in debt from 2008 to the present day. As Carl Icahn turns up, uh, apocalyptic. I am more hedged than ever. I'm one of the fund managers there. Uh, also Rothschild. This is the greatest experiment in monetary policy history of the world. And fund managers fear central banks will create the next Lehman moment. And if you don't want know what Lehman is, it was a bank in 2008 that went bust. The Bank for International Settlements also says the world is defenseless against the next financial crisis. Uh, Mervyn King, the former Chairman of the Bank of England, more QE will not help the world, says Mervyn King. Uh, the West Central Banks are ignoring the basic lessons of economic history. And the quantitative easing experiment is ending in global recession. It certainly is. And to add to their woes, we've got uh, the derivatives, the ticking time bomb, as it's uh, called. And as Dr. Paul Craig Roberts says, financial deregulation turned Wall Street into a casino with no rules except unrestrained making money, which is what we've seen certainly during the last eight years. Now, derivatives are gambling instruments, they're futures options, and you don't need a lot of money to take positions on betting on futures directions in the currency markets, commodities markets, or any market. 
So these instruments are created out of fresh air, which allows the banks to actually gamble on. And now, when you think about how the profit margins are being squeezed with interest rates being so low, i.e. lending depositors money and to get a return on that, they're not making enough money. So they start gambling with depositors money. And this is uh, simply terrifying. So as you see here from the Huffington Post, we've got big banks, uh, time bomb ticking, derivatives, the new ticking time bomb, global derivatives, 1.5 quadrillion. So these instruments allow the banks to leverage up on a low amount of uh, funds that they have. It's called margining the position and they can ratchet up on these positions, which is why as you'll see with the likes of Deutsche Bank, have 47 trillion in derivatives, but only have a, an income, I think, of about 3 billion. And it's just simply terrifying. So one failure in the derivatives market will have the house of cards in the banking system falling apart. There's no doubts about that. Italy PM unloads on Deutsche Bank's unfixable problem, hundreds and hundreds of billions of derivatives. Again, it's 47 uh, trillion uh, that they ha actually have in uh, derivatives gambling instruments. And I'm going to come back to this before we conclude as well. What other people or what uh, most people don't realize is that the banks can take your money. In 2008, we had uh, what were known as bailouts. The taxpayer funded the saving of uh, Lloyd's, the uh, Royal Bank of Scotland and Northern Rock. And this money was used to uh, hold these banks together, which uh, some of it is still in uh, public ownership, uh, some of it gone. And the same in America, the banks were bailed out, as we saw earlier with the list from CNN. However, in 2011, legislation was brought in to actually, in the event that uh, we had another banking crisis, that the taxpayer wouldn't actually foot the bill. And for the UK, from the 1st of January of 2016, the government will only cover the limit of 75,000 and should protect 95% of all savers. This used to be 85,000, but the change was brought in in January. Now, anything over and above the 75,000, of course, will be taken by the failing bank in exchange for worthless bonds. And as it uh, says here in these other headlines the italian banks have got problems uh, a new worry for bank investors bail-in risk mario draghi takes renzi aside on italian bank bail-in dispute and this is also a screenshot from uh, .gov.uk this is the uk's uh, all of the details about uh, bail-ins should they be required i don't know whether they're going to be required or not but the legislation has been put in place just in case it's required so you can see this is uh, all going on. We've got the European banks failing the stress tests as well. That's the money on deposit in the event of a crisis. Would they be able to cope with it? And you can see uh, EU enters brave new world of bail-ins. Uh, bail and this is a very sad story. Italian bank rescue uh, marred by suicide and loss of savings. One of the Italian banks had to be bailed in in December of uh, last year and one of the deposit holders committed suicide when he discovered that the funds had been taken from his account and left a note pinned to his chest to uh, that effect as well, letting everybody know what had happened. So when people say this can't happen, it already is happening. And of course, uh, what is also happening that people aren't aware of with the low rates in the uh, banking sector for deposits and also the risks associated with banks that are building up in the background, a lot of people are stashing the cash under the mattress. And again, if we look at uh, the uh, headlines, the Wall Street Journal, repo rate spike as bank hoard cash. Uh, marks, and, uh, this is actually, let me just backtrack a second here. This isn't uh, consumers. This is banks looking for ways to hoard cash. So the banks are now looking at ways to hoard cash as well as uh, uh, consumers, which we'll come to in just a second. So Commerce Bank considering hoarding billions to avoid ECB charges. Banks look for cheap ways to store cash and pile as rates go negative. You see, when the rates are going negative, the margins are being squeezed, which I've already spoken about, which then puts pressure on the consumer having to foot the bill to actually put money into their accounts. And guess what happens? Yeah, absolutely. The depositors, the, the likes of you and I, take our money out of the banks and we keep it at home. 
so more people were keeping cash outside of the banks. German savers lose faith in bank stash cash at home. The Swiss also doing exactly the same as are the Japanese. So what's the fastest selling item on the planet at the moment in these negative rate countries? Well, you've guessed it, it's a safe. So uh, safe sellout in Japan, 1000 franc note demand source as a NERP, which is the negative interest rate uh, triggers cash hoarding, safe sales rocketing, rush to withdraw savings, threat of negative looms, savers fear interest rates um, on business accounts. And of course, as you get squeezed with the margins that you can make in the banks, you either play with the derivatives market to gamble and make uh, up the bonuses or push the money back into the stock market to try and create bonuses and cover the operating costs. And what happens, of course, when rates go negative, then the job losses go in the banks as well. So you're seeing this also being reported as well. So the conclusion really is how could this end? And unfortunately, as I said at the outset, this is not the cheeriest of videos, but uh, it is the reality and that's uh, it. You know, there's no point in uh, shilly shallying around the subject. This is what it is. There is a financial problem looming and we have two ways uh, to deal with it. We can either ignore it or face it and take certain measures in order to protect ourselves and uh, I will be discussing that in a separate video but to conclude with this video let's have a look at how this could end. Well the first thing is we could end up with a, a bond or stock market collapse well that's going to happen anyway but it just depends what actually triggers it so again the headlines at the moment here here's why the collapse in global bond yields could cause a one trillion financial nightmare the only way to fix the economy is for the stock market to collapse. Bonds won't protect you if uh, stocks crash, and that's because we've already got a bond bubble as well, so that's why it won't protect you. We could have a currency collapse. We've already got currency collapses going on around the globe. They've been going on for the last 12 months. Venezuela is uh, one of the first. Brazil, Puerto Rico, uh, to name just a few. So we, there could be a potential currency collapse as well. Uh, and also, I'll just go back to that one because uh, there is, a, again, this credibility faith issue or lack of faith uh, in the US dollar as well, which could trigger it. And then, of course, we've got the derivatives blow up, uh, 600 trillion time bomb. There seems to be a difference in figures uh, on this. I think some of the uh, banks have actually managed to get rid of some of their uh, derivatives. I don't know, but whatever. It's still a huge amount of money. It's still uh, half, over half a quadrillion. Uh, I mean, it's just lunacy now, uh, the sort of figures. Again, the Italian uh, banks as well, Deutsche Bank. Uh, speaking of which, let me just show you this as I'm recording today. Merkel uh, rules out bailout for Deutsche and uh, depositors bailing coming up as well. So I, I meant to throw that one in a bit earlier and forgot. And uh, just to, again, uh, make matters worse for Deutsche Bank this morning, the share price has collapsed again, now below the 11 euros per share. You can see that uh, as of today, we've got uh, problems there with Deutsche Bank. This is the one to watch for my money. Once we get below 10 euros, then uh, I think the knives will be out and we'll see a charge to the downside on. But coming back to this, so again, that derivative situation, that ties in with Deutsche Bank and all of the other banks that are holding these uh, massive gambling instruments as well. And then the most miserable, dreariest that uh, it could happen. But uh, Gerald Salenti is right. If you go back in history and have a look, and that could be the potential for World War Three, As he says, when all else fails, they take you to war. And don't believe that's possible? Well, the headlines again are reporting it. You just have to go and have a look and find them. And uh, God forbid that we get to this option. I much prefer we go through any of the other options other than these. And of course, I'm recording this video on the day when uh, the first debate between Trump and Clinton will take place. So who knows what uh, is going to unfold. And again, fingers crossed that uh, we won't uh, see this happen. That's all uh, we can hope and pray for. So really, that's it uh, for this video. I will be doing another video. Uh, it's not all doom and gloom. Forewarned is forearmed. That will follow uh, shortly when I uh, put together some uh, ways of how you can become your own central bank to uh, hedge your position 
and uh, stay ahead of the game as this unfolds and it's already unfolding i've just shown you deutsche bank share price dropping again and uh, merkel threatening not to uh, use the ecb money in order to bail it out so uh, watch this space and uh, keep reporting back okay that's it uh, for this video but just before we uh, finish uh, do take a moment to subscribe at the video channel also feel free to share the video and also leave us a thumbs up if you're on social media check out the uh, facebook page you can find me there at keith cottrell and uh, also uh, when you're there make sure you click on the like button as well and also on uh, twitter you can find me under keith cottrell as well so uh, follow me on twitter right that's it thanks for watching i shall see you in the next one